With two international wars and unemployment still high, does the United States really need to revamp its image in the United Kingdom? Apparently so. The U.S. State Department announced plans for a new billion-dollar embassy in London. Is this a proper pursuit or a royal waste of tax dollars? RT correspondent Priya Shreeder has the story. Embassy Row, the heart of Washington, D.C.'s diplomatic scene. Here you'll find embassies of all shapes and sizes. There are embassies that are too small, others that are too big, and yet others that seem just right. These buildings can show just how big of a deal the country is to the United States. But what about American embassies abroad? How do they measure up? Well, when it comes down to certain countries, it seems like the U.S. wants everyone to know that it's kind of a big deal. The latest? An announcement that the United States is building a brand new $1 billion embassy in London. And the price tag is what's catching many Americans' eyes. Well, I definitely think that the money could go uh, somewhere a little more practical. I mean, a billion dollars is pretty ridiculous. I think it's a great idea if they can give me a job. <laughs> I'm all for it. I just think, why would you do that in London? Part of the cost for our friends across the pond is building a pond to protect them from terrorist attacks. The new embassy in London is going to be more expensive than the $700 million newly built embassy in Baghdad. While most Americans get the importance of a presence in Baghdad, building a medieval-style moat to ward off terrorists is a little tougher to swallow. It's a little over excessive, I think. Uh, I mean, if you think about, you know, 9-11, I mean, they didn't get... They didn't get there with boats. I think that uh, I think moats are very practical, but I think they're at least a couple hundred years out of date. Well, they're coming on horseback, I guess, but otherwise, probably not. I mean, surely their people know how to swim, the terrorists, wouldn't they? Hey, Obama. Here in Washington, many Americans are still waiting on the government to deliver on things like health care, the economy, and immigration reform. And spending $1 billion in a recession for some fancy digs in your friend's backyard might not go over well when there are hundreds of homeless camping out in the president's backyard. Priya, it seems like this idea of a medieval moat is causing a, a lot of the controversy here, but we also have to talk about the cost of this. A billion dollars is a lot of money. Why is it that we need this new embassy right now? Well, that's a great question, Christine, and that's what a lot of people asked me when I told them about this story. Many of them were unaware that this was actually even happening. According to the State Department, uh, the old embassy was designed in the 50s. It opened in 1960, and it's just not cutting it anymore. Apparently, it doesn't meet the modern office needs, I guess you could say. They said it's overcrowded, and it doesn't, uh, you know, as far as security measures, it doesn't stack up. So one of the interesting things I also found out while researching this story is that uh, American, uh, the United States has been moving American embassies out out of major cities, uh, farther away from those cities, uh, to help protect themselves. So many people thought, you know, why not do that in this case? But other people said, why London? I mean, is the United States under attack in London? Why here? It didn't really make a lot of sense to them. So um, not really sure exactly why right now was the best time to do it, but uh, it's definitely raising a few eyebrows here in Washington, D.C. And Priya, you had mentioned uh, that this is not the only place where we're building an embassy, where this country is building an embassy. Talk to me a little bit about some of the other countries and the price tags and what we can expect to see there. That's right, Christine. Well, as I mentioned in the story, uh, the most expensive American embassy as of right now is in Baghdad. That was recently built, and it cost $700 million. The United States is also planning to build an $850 million embassy in Pakistan. So, you know, most of the people I spoke to could kind of understand why an American presence would be important in those countries. Not so much in London, but this embassy in London, uh, the groundbreaking for it is set for 2013, and it's expected to be completely by 2017. And just to quote uh, the architect who's in charge of this project, he said that this is going to be a beacon that is a respectful icon representing the strength of the U.S.-U.K. relationship. Not sure exactly why they needed this sort of crystal fortress with a moat that costs one billion dollars as a symbol of the friendship, but that's what the plan is so far. Bria, let's talk about the architecture here. I mean, I know this thing hasn't been built yet. I think you've taken a look at the plans. I mean, is there going to be a million-dollar spa inside or something crazy like that? I mean, this seems very elaborate. Uh, I don't know the details about a spa 
Spa. Um, basically, a Philadelphia architecture firm won uh, the plan to build this. It basically looks like a crystal fortress, as you might have seen in some of those pictures. And I think uh, the most interesting thing to most people is the moat that's supposedly going to prevent uh, a terrorist attack. The State Department said that you know it will prevent if a vehicle wants to ram into the building. But you know, as uh, one of the people I interviewed in the story mentioned, hey, what about 9/11? They used a plane. I don't think a moat's really going to stop that. And a lot of them joked around with me that you know maybe the United States should look into maybe getting some dragons or sharks or something like that to put in their moat. <laughs> and Priya, just uh, another question for you. I mean, the people that you were speaking to, what was their immediate reaction? I mean, we heard from some of them, but when you sort of explained to them what was going to happen here, well, tell me what the look on their face said. Um, a lot of them didn't believe me at all, Christine. You know, some of them thought it was something out of Harry Potter, or some sort of sci-fi movie, and, you know, they kept wanting to see the pictures over and over again. But, yeah, a lot of them didn't even think that this was real. But when, in fact, I told them that this is the plan, it has been announced by the State Department, a lot of them were angry about the fact that this is a billion dollars, we're in a recession, unemployment hasn't been solved. As you just mentioned in your previous interviews, you know, health care is still an issue that's on a lot of Americans' minds, and they thought, you know, that billion dollars could be used right here at home instead of abroad. All right, Priya Shree, they're joining us live from the newsroom.